Also, ähm, ich hoffe, das passt mit Ton. Muss mir da noch, ich ich habe es eingeschaut. <lacht> okay, hi Leute. Um, I'm going to have this talk in English. Uh, does anyone prefer German instead of English? Okay. I, I kill you with my laser pointer now. <laughs> so, hello guys. My name is Dr. Barbara Andrisek. Thank you for the warm welcome and this nice introduction. And um, I'm going to have a talk about data security and privacy of chatbots. And uh, I'm very happy to be here. Also on, this, uh, on the one side because uh, the um, DefoSec conference um, um, and also um, SBA research is a partner of Women and Code and also I'm back on the TU Wien, which is my alma mater. I studied here, I made my diploma engineer here and another master and then also my PhD. So I'm happy to be back. Um, so about my background. Working. Yes. Um, so I've been working as a freelancer and consultant for more than 18 years now. So I uh, had my first professional job 2001 for IBM. Actually, at the moment, I'm also working for IBM. So I came back. Um, in, in the meantime, I was working for different bigger projects like banking projects like Erste Bank and, and Telekom Austria and so on. I have a speciality in Java, especially backend development, but I also have a disposedness to frontend, uh, <coughs> meaning AngularJS is one of my most uh, favorable frontend frameworks and uh, different other JavaScript frameworks and so on. And um, um, something changed in my life after the F8 conference. Um, this is the Facebook conference of Facebook um, where they announced three years ago that they opened up their API for chatbots. And since I'm a backend developer, I thought, yeah, I mean, it's an API. Let's try this. Let's do this. And what happened was that I started then a company after that. What I'm currently doing is women in code, but the company that I started is the chatbots agency. So I created one of the first chatbots uh, in the German speaking region on Facebook Messenger and also on Skype and uh, gained a lot of uh, interest from other companies because they said they also want to have something like this. So I started some, uh, an agency where we do chatbots or where we, uh, where we program software engineering projects for clients. And um, um, after three years, I decided it was, uh, it was uh, time for a change, so I started uh, Women in Code, which is a non-profit organization. So all of you boys in this room, maybe you have a girlfriend, maybe you have a sister, uh, maybe you have someone who's interested in coding, um, please send them to us. So we are an initiative only for women, women or people who um, describe themselves as female, and uh, we have basic introduction courses without any prior knowledge, so everyone is welcome. So that's about me. So what about chatbots? <laughs> Who already used a chatbot in his life? Okay, let's say a third maybe in this room who, uh, who, is, who knows what a chatbot is? Okay, so I don't uh, want to bore you too much about the details of chatbots, but let's have a short introduction about chatbots for those people who are not so familiar with it. So a chatbot is defined as a computer program that, uh, <coughs> or an artificial intelligence with quotes, because artificial intelligence is a term that is widely misused also. So uh, I'm a little bit more, I like to be a little bit more concrete about that. What is artificial intelligence? For me, it's deep learning and not what's on a PowerPoint slide. And um, a chatbot is a computer program um, where you can interact with it in um, natural language. That could be auditory, that could be also through textual input. Meets the Hipster Catbot, my own project, for instance, is also available on Alexa or Google Home uh, or Google Assistant. So you can also talk to her. But in the end, something like a chatbot is, for me as a backend developer, is just a text input, text output thing. It's a REST interface, basically. Um, who of you is a backend developer? Oh wow, so many. Okay, and the rest is 
front end or undefined or so. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. So, um, and the m most interesting thing about chatbots is that it's fully integrated usually in the systems you already use, like Facebook Messenger, Skype, and so on, or in your Apple phone because you have uh, Siri there and so on. It's it could be a virtual assistant that helps you with everything, like uh, planning appointments with, uh, wi with uh, a friend, a doctor. Uh, it's accessible, it's 24-7 accessible, which is um, it's the most basic part of it, to, um, to have a chatbot that uh, accompanies something like a hotline for, an, for a company. And it's, yeah, it's always available. So. Why chatbots? Chatbots are such a new thing because Facebook said it. I'm not sure about that. So um, Facebook was actually second uh, recently who announced that they open up their API because just a few weeks before there was this build conference of Microsoft and they announced it first to open up their API for uh, app developers. Uh, but not so many people took notice of it because it was Microsoft. A few weeks later, Facebook said it and everyone got crazy about it. I'm actually not sure why this was like that, but it was like that. And also, some chatbots got lots of funding. There was this one chatbot is called Hype Honcho, who got two million funding um, after they just announced it, that they opened up their API. And also Google uh, opened up then their API and some other uh, cloud natural language APIs and so on started popping up. Um, like uh, mushrooms, as we say in German. And, um, but actually, chatbots are not such a new thing. Um, historically speaking, the first chatbot was uh, built uh, at the MIT AI lab by Joseph Weizenbaum, or Weizenbaum, or <laughs> however you pronounce this in English, English, uh, American English. So historically speaking, the first chatbot was built by Joseph Weizenbaum, at the MIT AI lab in the 1960s. And this bot called Eliza simulated a Rogerian psychiatrist that always took uh, whatever the patient or the client said to the chatbot and rephrased it into an, another question. So when the, uh, when the client said something like, oh, last night I had a dream about my father, then the chatbot Eliza replied with, oh, tell me more about your father. So it was pretty simple and Weizenbaum wanted to show how um, basically and easily it is to uh, interact through a verbal or textual interface with the computer instead of, the, um, instead of you know, other command line interfaces. So it was uh, the natural language that was um, the, first, um, the, 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 the first approach to, uh, to show uh, what a chatbot or it can be capable of. So. And also, the first computers were built in a question-answer manner. So this was actually the, the most natural interface that we have. I mean, our interface is humans. I'm here, I say something, you reply. So uh, also the first computers were built in this manner. So it was actually not such a new thing. And there were also lots of uh, computer text-based uh, uh, text computer programs like Sorg, for instance. Who is old enough to remember Sorg? Okay, <laughs> I'm not the oldest person in the room. I'm happy. Um, so it's actually not such a new thing, chatbots. It was always there. Why now? We see in the statistics that uh, messaging is uh, surpassing social media in terms of uh, usage, app usage, mobile app usage, for instance. These are the, th uh, the four biggest messaging apps, WhatsApp Messenger and WeChat and Viber, that have surpassed uh, the biggest four social networks, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And um, this is, continue to, is continuing to rise. Um, on the, so we see it also in uh, uh, like absolute numbers. Ob obviously, Facebook is uh, on top of all the social networks. Um, then we see on the other side that app downloads are going down to zero. So people don't download new apps, especially with the saturation of smartphones in, um, uh, through the market. And my 
my uh, number one example is my mom because she's using this phone, a smartphone for just calling and texting and so on. So people also don't download apps. Who, who downloaded an app in the last month? Wow. <laughs> okay, you're not the target group, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Okay, I have to make a, a question then afterwards, what app it was. Maybe, do you have a sec for dev app? No, okay, <laughs> not this one. So, but the, the hmm? Coding one? Okay, yeah. <laughs> now, live coding. <laughs> uh, but, but you see, zero apps on average are um, more than 50%. And also there are some people who say the internet is dying because people use usually only these few websites they, they know. It's uh, Facebook in the US, it's Twitter, and so on, and th then your daily news website, but uh, the number of websites is declining, which is quite interesting. And people also, there are lots of people, especially millennials or younger millennials. I mean, so I also qualify as millennial, but anyway. Uh, so uh, they are using Facebook as their news feeds so they don't go to uh, websites or use news apps or something, something like that. On the other hand, we see that the usage time on messaging apps is going up, especially in the United States. We see it was 15, nine minutes a day, and it's 50% more only three years later. So it's 15 minutes a day in just messaging apps, and this is like continuing. People like to text. And uh, also, just this is the last statistics I show you is um, the mobile messaging report where they say that people expect services to reply instantly or at least in 24 hours. And this is also a, a little bit ridiculous, but we are now in a world where everyone expects everything to happen instantaneously. We see, we see also platforms arising. They have, they have all of them have uh, growth in user numbers, and uh, also the new ones like Slack and Alexa are here, going uh, going up. And of course, interesting, the web. <laughs> it's probably not infinite, but uh, close to infinite. But uh, we have lots of websites, so the potential to put websites for companies to uh, to put the chatbot there. Um, also, the platforms differ very much in the regions. Usually, uh, when, you, when you decide to launch a chatbot, you have to decide what platform to use. For instance, we have something like Viber, what is more in this, uh, in this uh, Balkan region, and Russia, and so on, and Israel, super strong, or Line, that, is, uh, that comes from, uh, from Japan, so it is strong in these regions. Also in the, in, in the Asian market and uh, of course WeChat, which is in, uh, in QQ, which is in, in China, super popular and we also don't, as, as non-Chinese people, we don't have access to it, <laughs> not full access to it. Uh, but in the United States, we have this one platform, Kik. Usually no one heard of Kik before in this. Uh, okay, who uses Kik here? Oh, two people at least, <laughs> or, <laughs> okay, two and a half. Uh, and Kik is something that teenagers use in the United States. It's like um, their Snapchat for teenager texting because Facebook is uncool. So they go to uh, any other platform. So, um, however, messengers are widely used. So, um, about my own project, you already said it, Yvonne, that uh, it's, it's a chatbot that helps you discover the best places. So this is meet the hipster cat, but this is actually a QR code, but please don't scan it now because then you would not listen to my talk. You can, <laughs> you can try her later. So it's, this is the, my chatbot. It, it started out as a pet project of mine, so I like it, a pet project like my cat. It was a virtual cat based on my cat at home, Mita, the hipster cat. Mita actually means uh, Mita Katze, like pussy cat uh, in Czech, like Mita. And uh, so I called my cat like this, so it was not so such a great name either. Fire alarm again. <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I started out uh, developing it and then we became more and more users. So it was more a miracle than, uh, than a really uh, planned startup start. 
So, but what about the security of messengers? Since I, we, I implemented Meets with a hipster catbot for all of them, like really every single uh, chat platform where you can launch uh, bots officially, I programmed, I, I developed, the in, uh, did the integration of the user interface, like uh, Facebook obviously, Skype and so on, and also these other interesting uh, frameworks like Line, which is in, in Asia and so on. So I know what we are dealing with. Usually they, um, they offer something like a REST API or some have an uh, RPC API, which is a little bit disturbing nowadays, but um, usually you do it like this. And uh, the basis of chatbots are, is are the channels where they are provided in. So when you, um, when you use a, chatbot in Facebook Messenger, you are on the infrastructure of Facebook. I mean, for you as developers, it's not something super <coughs> mind-blowing, but most people have uh, some other, especially non-developers, have some other uh, thoughts behind that because they, um, they didn't expect that Facebook is listening to your conversations. And I'm coming and <coughs> talking about this a little bit more in detail later. There is this. EFF uh, secure messaging scorecard. Unfortunately, it's already outdating, outdated, but um, messenger app providers are expected to keep their users data private. Uh, messaging is still private and the limiting thing. So the conversation between a user and the chatbot owner are thought to be not shared with the public without the user's explicit consent. But um, also what about the security of the platforms itself? Because you can, if you, if you like, if you are able to do that, you can uh, develop your software as, as secure as possible. But if the underlying platform is hacked or has a data leak or whatever is unsecure, then uh, you have some problems. And the EFF score card was, um, they, they evaluated, evaluated apps and tools based on seven specific criteria ranging from whether the messages are encrypted in transit or wherever not, or the code was recently audited. So this is the uh, latest version of the scorecard and I hope some person takes some time and forks it and um, develops it further. But you see here also that some, <coughs> or the general picture is, it's not so secure, it's far too red for my taste like in general. Um, this is uh, the other one. Signal is obviously, as we, uh, as we all hopefully know, is uh, considered as one of the most secure platforms. But um, also WhatsApp is lacking some, um, some, uh, uh, some points here because it was not independently reviewed. Uh, and I mean, we don't expect of all these manufacturers of, of messaging platforms to have open source systems that are reviewed, but at least uh, they could try because some other do, like Telegram, for instance. But, um, and they, uh, this list is anyway involving, so it's, uh, it's possibly outdated. Um, and I, yeah, I invite you to fork it and update it. Um, so. What about your personal data? Um, with bots, we are entering now a new era of privacy uh, perspective because we are completing a new shift of data control. So we, we push it from, from the user to the messenger provider. Um, and Facebook was also quite recently and also uh, quite recently and also after the few years also in discussion with privacy uh, issues and, and data leaks and so on. And in the future, you can order, um, for instance, an Uber through your messenger app. In, in China, we see in China also always the, that's actually the next slide. In China, we see also kind of the future, what is going to be expected to happen here, but you cannot translate it 100%. But in China, you see uh, this is even, uh, this is this is WeChat. WeChat Pay is totally integrated into the everyday life. Uh, the, the people in China, mainland China, and um, so the users uh, um, are used to pay everything 
wireless, contactless also, and uh, obviously not with, with cash. And what's on the other hand, so you can order a taxi, you can also uh, buy train tickets and everything. So it's also very convenient because you just have one app. And in China, it's also possible to spend your whole digital life just in this, um, in this WeChat app. So you don't really have to use something else because you can book an appointment with a doctor through this app and so on. So um, on the other hand, what is, what, is the, what is China doing or, the, um, or, or WeChat itself? It collects data. And as you know, data is very valuable. And um, usually when you, when you use an app that is for free, you pay with the data. And what chatbot providers do is they create uh, profiles with the data. So it's not very surprising that um, your data is actually, when, when you share something, uh, you share it with, uh, you, so when you, when you share something, then it's, it's also possible that someone does something with it without your explicit consent. And personal data is worth a lot for Facebook and Google, obviously. And um, pl bot platforms are not designed with security in mind. So this is, this is one thing that, that everyone is not aware. Because people also text with the chatbots, and I developed a couple of chatbots, and they text with the chatbot as no one is listening, which is kind of funny. Because people also start to um, say something very stupid at the beginning and uh, try to insult the chatbot. But they are actually, people are also talking to the chatbot as no one is listening and they, they are not aware that everyone is listening. I mean, I'm as a developer can listen to a conversation between you and the chatbot. And um, also, not only I am listening, also Facebook or Google or whoever is listening, also my analytics tool is listening. And of course, the, the underlying platform is listening. And uh, we have a lot of these cloud-based AI engines. Uh, most of the chatbots are using one of those cloud-based AI engines. Who can, who can spot what is here in this, in this picture, by the way? Yeah! yeah. <laughs> well. So it's not so obvious, and it's a little bit stretched, so it's, as I see. So, um, um, so these this, uh, cloud-based AI engines are used for chatbots. So um, some, some build chatbots with, with, uh, with AI uh, or API AI or IBM Watson, and, and who is listening to these conversations? Obviously, IBM is listening to these conversa conversations as well, and they are feeding it back, uh, back into IBM Watson. So um, for another intelligent analysis and for analytics reasons and so on. So um, there is one specific part what we know about the user when you're texting with the, with the chatbot itself because depending on, I, I just listened to uh, six, uh, six main platforms, obviously there are more. Um, some platforms know, uh, give, give you as a developer officially also more data. Uh, something like Facebook Messenger, you have the first name, last name, you get a user picture and the age and the gender and the time zone and the locale. Uh, you get, um, you can send a GPS location also, you can also send, uh, you, you get the username and the age indirectly through uh, a little backdoor that is commonly known and um, I also reported it because I thought, yes, security bug bounty bounty, but I didn't get the price. They said it's not a bug, it's a feature, so I didn't get it. <laughs> um, but you see on, on different platforms, you get more data of the user and it's very valuable, especially something like a time zone. Because uh, my, my chatbot hipster cat is um, going worldwide. So um, biggest country is something like the US. So um, when I'm sending notifications to the user back, I want to know if it's uh, maybe 3 a.m. in the morning or if it's 3 p.m. in the afternoon. So this is valuable information. And also, when you already send the location, the GPS location, you can also be sent on, on Telegram and Viber is not listed here. And you can do something with this GPS location. I mean, it's, it's the same like Foursquare and and uh, TripAdvisor and so on. The GPS location is key 
to send then the user again some other data. You've been in this, in this coffee shop, let's go to the restaurant that is just around the corner next time. So this is what uh, we officially know about the chatbots. Um, but you can also do some personality profiles. Um, I already um, tried to, um, try to uh, or I, I just mentioned it by the side, but this is, um, so you receive, you receive data through the APIs, like officially through the messenger bot, but people write a lot on this chatbot and you can do a lot also with the text they write. You can create not only personality profiles, you can have sentiment analysis, which is pretty, uh, pretty, uh, a pretty cool tool to determine <coughs> when, you, when you create a service, let's say a chatbot on the website of a mobile phone provider, mobile network provider, then you want to know, is this person happy or not happy? Then you can respond accordingly to it. And um, so uh, this is, and, and you can also determine the writer's attitude towards some specific topics um, like a product. Is it positive, is it negative, or maybe a political view? And we had it also recently in the news of, uh, in the Austrian news, that the Post was gathering data of people concerning their political views. And um, this, is, this is for me, as I'm also, also concerned about um, uh, e-voting and, and e-government and so on, this is like crazy what, what, the, uh, what people um, indirectly um, what, what, what data is publicly available and indirectly you can guess by some behavior of a person. Um, so, however, also consider also who else might be listening to your conversations and I don't mean the bot developer or also the project managers who, who scroll through the texts that the bots, uh, that the people talk with the bots to improve the bot, but also um, everyone is listening to it. Uh, you can, uh, and, and some people write really uh, weird things, especially pictures. And I personally, with my bots, I don't look at the pictures, but I use some uh, AI tools to parse this picture. And there is also um, a filter for it, for sexual content and people, so I, I don't really, I'm, I'm not interested in that, but people send that. And yeah, I mean, you can also do something about these pictures if you like. So, um, just to sum it up, um, because I think I'm very good in my time, uh, just to sum it up, when you text to a chatbot or to any other service or when you leave a digital trace of whatever kind, be careful what you're texting. <laughs> Thanks for chatting. <laughs> Vielen Dank. Wir haben jetzt noch ein paar Fragen über Slido. Uh, die erste, have you created a matrix-based bot yet? A matrix-based? What is this? Keine Ahnung, wer is hat die Frage this gestellt? Is like Neo? Siehst du Matrix? Nein. <lacht> uh, matrix ist ein Versuch, ein offenes, dezentralisiertes Messenger-Netzwerk zu bauen. Also es ist nicht nur für Messenger geschrieben, aber hauptsächlich ist relativ neu. Hat jetzt, geht, ist jetzt gerade die 1.0-Spezifikation rausgekommen. Oh, really? Also Riot heißt, ist die Messenger-Applikation, die Standardimplementierung. Ist eine recht, recht coole Sache. Also eben ein offenes Netzwerk, du kannst eigene, eigene Home-Server betreiben, die dann, die dann föderiert reden können. Hm. Also ein bisschen so wie, wie jetzt bei Twitter, das Mastodon zum Beispiel, aber halt für, für Messenger. Okay. Gibt's auch, ich weiß jetzt, dass auch Bots auch möglich sind. Ich wollte wissen, fragen, ob du Erfahrung damit hast. Ja. Also äh, eben nicht alle Plattformen unterstützen äh, Chatbots wie WhatsApp zum Beispiel. Wir haben haufenweise Anfragen bekommen für WhatsApp-Chatbots, machen wir nicht. Um, weil die API das nicht offiziell unterstützt. Es gibt aber Unternehmen, die sich darauf spezialisiert haben, das zu reverse engineeren und so weiter. Also das ist auch ganz lustig. Aber um, ja, Matrix. Muss ich mir anschauen. Wochenendprojekt, oder? Um, du hast ja viel aufgezeigt, was von den einzelnen, um, also welche privaten Daten auch gesammelt werden. Um, jetzt kam die Frage, was dein Bot um, über den User weiß, ob du da speziell drauf schaust, nicht zu viele Daten oder nicht zu viele Sachen zu sammeln oder wie du das handhabst? Naja, mit der DSGVO ist es jetzt auch ein bisschen schwieriger geworden, natürlich. Und ähm, weil ich das halt im Hinterkopf habe, äh, speichere ich mittlerweile keine personenbezogenen Daten. 
Aber das ist halt auch mit der DSGVO ist es halt auch immer so ein Vertrauensding, ob es die Unternehmen wirklich machen, ob sie brav sind, ob sie auch ein Data Breach dann melden, weil es gibt ja Strafen und so weiter. Also man, man hofft eigentlich immer nur aufs Beste. Deswegen, also in meinem, in meinem Fall, ich, äh, ich mache ich mach eine Mischung aus Daten dann nicht speichern oder also bei, bei meinen Chatbots bzw. Äh, pseudonymisieren. Weil eigentlich bräuchte man für Mieter ja eigentlich nur den Stand. Ort, oder? Na, du, du sagst, also entweder ist es die GPS-Location äh, oder du gibst die Adresse halt ein, so etwas wie Gusshausstraße 1040 Wien. Das würde auch funktionieren. Also es kann, es kann die Adresse auch als Text kommen oder London oder äh, Tokio oder Sydney oder was auch immer, also ein, ein Stadtnamen. Ja. Okay. Aber dazu habe ich dann, also es ist ja auch so, ich, ich nehme ja an, dass die Person vielleicht ja auch dort ist was ja auch nicht stimmen muss, ja? aber ist auch ein bisschen fraglich. Mhm. Ähm, ich selbst weiß ja, wenn ich jetzt mit einem Chatbot auf einer Unternehmenswebseite zum Beispiel chatte, weiß ich ja oft gar nicht, dass es ein Bot ist, oder? Ja, das ist etwas, was ich äh, auch immer wieder sage ähm, oder bei mein, meinen Talks auch habe und wenn ich mit Kunden rede, dass die Bots äh, auch speziell immer sagen sollen, ob sie ein Bot sind oder nicht. Bei vielen Webseiten ist es so, dass sich der Bot auch explizit als Bot vorstellt und dann so etwas sagt wie, hallo, ich bin, keine Ahnung, jetzt äh, bei, bei drei gibt es zum Beispiel einen Bot, der heißt Troy, <lacht> Troy und äh, der stellt sich halt auch so vor. Ja, ich bin halt der äh, auf der Webseite, aber man weiß es nicht. Nein. Ja. Und gibt es eigentlich eine Möglichkeit, dass man seine persönlichen, Info, dass man das irgendwie unterdrückt, wenn ich weiß, ich äh, chatte mit dem Bot wahrscheinlich nicht, oder? Also Nein, technisch gesehen, dass ich irgendwie meine persönlichen Informationen verbergen kann. Ja, nicht mit dem Bot schreiben. Das Einzige ist Möglichkeit. Sicher. Das ist auch so, der sicherste Computer ist der, der nicht im Internet ist. Also. Ähm, eine Frage noch, die jetzt eigentlich nichts mit Bots zu tun hat, mhm. aber trotzdem geredet, nein, nicht persönlich. Ähm, und zwar laut Wikipedia sind 60 Prozent ähm, aller Internet-User im Iran ähm, benutzen Telegram. Mhm. Weißt du, hast du eine Idee, warum das dort so stark genutzt wird? Das ist, ja, es ist halt immer so, ähm, das ist ein bisschen so wie Kick in den Vereinigten Staaten. Es geht manchmal ein bisschen viral, also Kick ist vor allem, ich nehme an, das ging an ein paar Highschools dann äh, irgendwie viral und dann ist es dort so ganz stark verbreitet. Warum jetzt Telegram gerade im Iran äh, ja, so ja, stark ist? Mhm. Ja, aber warum zum Beispiel Signal denn nicht? Ja, das ist eine amerikanische Firma. Achso, das ist eine amerikanische Firma. Okay. Gut, haben es alle gehört. Telegram <lacht> ähm, darf man dort runterladen, Signal zum Beispiel nicht. Gut, dann vielen herzlichen, noch, äh, vielen herzlichen Dank nochmal an dich. Nochmal einen Applaus bitte für Barbara. Danke schön.